Welcome back to part two of the Westwood style dress tutorial. Today, we're going to start constructing the bodice by following the instructions in Vogue 8385 with a few tweaks. I'll be showing you each step in the process while also pointing out a few mistakes to avoid. And trust me, I've learned the hard way. So let's get into it. Let's start with step four on page two of the instructions in the section titled front and back. The instructions tell us to reinforce the shoulder straps through the places marked by squares and large circles. To reinforce, simply sew a line of stitching on the seam line using a short stitch length. Now the edge of the fabric is on the bias, so I found that the fabric tended to stretch while I sewed, and back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam caused the fabric to bunch up. So instead of back stitching, I shortened my stitch length to zero and sewed a few stitches in place to lock the stitching at the beginning and ends of my seams. When you're done stitching, clip to the square on the armhole edge. Don't skip this step. If you do, the bodice won't turn inside out properly at the end. Once you're done reinforcing the exterior bodice pieces, repeat the process with the lining pieces. Now let's move on to step six, stitching the lining pieces to the exterior pieces. Pin the lining to the front, right sides together, matching notches, circles, and squares. Stitch the upper edge from front edge to armhole square. After that, make sure to clip to the square. Then trim the seam allowances down to about a quarter of an inch. Next, turn the lining to the inside and press the edge flat. Moving on to step eight, fold the shoulder strap of the front bodice pieces on the fold line, right sides together. Base the straps together, don't permanently stitch them. Make sure you only baste between the large circle and the square. You shouldn't baste all the way to the end of the strap. Next, repeat the process with the front lining piece. Again, making sure you only base between the large circle and the square. Now move on to step 10. Line up the folded shoulder straps and pin them together. Then stitch between the large circles and the squares. After that, make sure to clip to the large circle. If you don't do this, the bodice won't turn inside out properly at the end. Next, reach inside the shoulder strap and pull it out. When you're done, the lining of the strap should be encased within the strap, but the end of the strap should still be free. Now the instructions for step 11 tell you to lightly press the strap. Don't use an iron to do that. Instead, just use the warmth of your fingers to finger press the edge of the strap. You actually don't want the strap to lay completely flat, as you want the straps to have a little bit of a puffy look. You'll see what I mean when you see the finished bodice. Next. Pin the end of the shoulder straps together and baste through all of the layers. Next, stitch the back to the front bodice at the sides, as directed in step 13. Now this seam will be visible at the front, so it's really important to match the print along this seam really carefully. To stop the fabric from shifting during sewing, I try to pin on both sides of each stripe. I also don't remove the pins when I'm sewing because the act of removing the pin can cause the fabric to shift. Instead, I just sew very slowly and carefully over the pins, using the hand wheel if necessary to avoid sewing through the pins and breaking my needle. Finally, let's move on to step 14. Pin the ends of your shoulder straps to the armhole edges of the back, matching circles. Make sure you pin the straps exactly as shown in the instructions. The right side of the back bodice should be facing up, 
the right side of the strap should also be facing up and the flat edge of the strap should be facing outwards. Yes, this will mean that the strap is twisted on the finished bodice and that's exactly what is supposed to happen. Okay, that's the outside of the bodice done. Here's where we're going to move away from the pattern instructions a bit. Don't move on to step 15 and sew the peplum. Instead, jump to step 23, where the instructions walk you through sewing the lining of the bodice. Stitch the back lining to the front lining at the sides, matching notches and small circles. Now this is the lining of the bodice, so you don't have to worry about matching up the print, as it won't be visible anyway. Moving on to step 24, line up the lining to the exterior bodice at the front edge. Pin that edge and stitch. The instructions tell you to pin the lower edge, but don't do that. Leave that free as we'll be sewing the skirt to it later. When you're done sewing, trim down the seam allowances. Next, pin the upper back and armhole edges and stitch, as shown in step 25 of the instructions. To do this, you'll need to tuck the strap in between the exterior and lining layers of the bodice. This step can be very fiddly, so I suggest basting the bodice layers together to stop them from shifting while you are sewing. Once you have finished sewing the seam, cut notches around the armhole curves. Also, make sure to trim the seam allowance at the corners of the upper back. When you're done, turn the bodice right side out and give the entire bodice a nice press. Now we're going to skip steps 26 and 27 of the pattern instructions and instead jump directly to step 28. Form the pleat in the front by folding along the marked line, then bringing that fold up to the upper edge of the bodice. You'll end up with six layers of fabric when you're done, because there'll be three layers of the exterior fabric plus three layers of the lining fabric. Pin through all layers and hand sew to hold in place. Next, we need to do a few more things that aren't in the pattern instructions. First, we need to sew the back boning channels. There are two on either side of the center back, then another two channels closer to the side seam. Pin the exterior and lining back bodice pieces together at the side seams and bottom edge to make sure the two layers are aligned. Then, sew through both layers along the marked boning channels. Once you're done sewing the channels, insert the boning to make sure the channels are wide enough for the boning. Now we need to sew the boning channels at the side seam. To do this, just sew to one side of the side seam, about 3 eighths of an inch from the seam line. When you're done sewing the channels, insert the boning to check that it fits. Now it's time to insert the hook and eye tape. Baste the hook and eye tape to the center front of the bodice. Make sure the hooks are on the side of the bodice that laps over the other side, 
as this makes it easier to insert the hooks into the eyes. Try the bodice on to double check the fit, and if everything looks good, sew the hook and eye tape in permanently. When you're done sewing the hook and eye tape in, insert the boning to the left of the hook and eye tape. And now for the last and optional step, sewing on the buttons. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use black or red buttons, so I tried putting the black buttons on first. Then I tried putting on the red buttons and I decided that I liked the pop of color they added. So I ended up sewing those in permanently. And with that, the bodice is done. Here's a full 360 degree view of the bodice on my dress form. Now it's time to add the skirt to the dress. Check out part three of this tutorial to learn how to construct the skirt. I'll see you there.